I said, Sam, before you show me, I need to tell you, I'm going to ask Sarah to marry me. And he was in the middle of kind of showing me his stuff and he just went, yeah, okay, have baby while you're there. Anyway, the tiles. <laughs> He's like just obsessed I, with talking about these damn tiles. And I was like, Sam, you heard what I said? He's like, yeah, 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 all good, all good. And that Bloody was it. Hell. And Arab and their tiles. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Separate Bathrooms. We would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional custodians of this land, and pay our respects to the elders both past and present. I'm Cam Datto. I'm his wife, Ali. Yes, and we were late to a phenomenon. The hit TV series began March 7. That's a fine date. What a fine date. 2013. Yes. I was, well, let's not say how old I turned on that day because I can't do the math right You now. were in your 40s. <laughs> I was. Yes. <laughs> I was in do. my 40s. <laughs> anyway, the show started in the UK. Australia waited a couple of seasons. We got it in 2015. Gogglebox. Uh, Gogglebox. Yay. Gogglebox. It's one of our favourite shows. We, it has become one of our favourite shows. And, of course, we'll, we'll talk about it mm. with, with the couple we're bringing in. But, man, it's a funny show. I remember hearing about Gogglebox while we were living overseas and just thinking, this is the dumbest idea. Who cares? Who's going to care about watching people watching TV when mm. you... I didn't really know what the show was. I was being very highly judgmental. They choose the people well, though, don't it's they? It's in the casting of it. Yeah, it's of who's the casting. Watching the telly. Yeah, you've got the family of four. You've got a couple of fellas, older. You know, the, there's one guy who's a teacher. Uh, I mean, well, there's the surfy dudes. You've the got the dude. you've got the indigenous, in, the indigenous um, crew, the yeah, Indian family. Yes, the Indian so all family. The different cultures, the white Aussie family. Yeah. Oh my god, that's and so of funny. course. You've got <laughs> the Lebanese fellas <laughs> with the humping dog. Maddie and Sarah <laughs> Fard. They're coming in. I can't wait to see these two. I know. Now, Sarah is not on the show currently. She's, of course, taken time off to raise her two boys. She's got Malik and Leon. Leon. Yeah, beautiful yeah. names. Yeah. Look, let's just get them into the bathroom. <laughs> We're ready for a chat. Please welcome Maddie and Sarah into the bathroom. Welcome, Maddie and Sarah, to the bathroom. We're really excited to have you both. We're really excited. We've uh, we're we're big fans. Thank you so oh, much yes. for having us. We're your, very excited show. to be here. And we're missing you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I know I've been off screen. I'm usually just walking past them, getting in their way now. You're delivering food normally. I yeah, think that's I'm, what you're I'm looking after a baby now yes. in the background. I'm usually like, there's a baby crying, then I need to get a bottle. So I'm like back and forth, yeah, back and forth. Yeah, fair enough. It's would been you, too would hard you, to sit down. Would you go back? Look, Gogglebox of course you is would. great to be you. on. It's so great. It just hasn't quite worked out. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's new mama. One kid was fine, but doing... Two on top of everything else. It's yeah. too hard. I just can't right now. When Sarah and I started the show, we were living in an apartment that we were renting. We were dating. We'd been dating for about 18 months. Since being on the show, we've bought a house, gotten engaged, gotten a dog, gotten married, had two kids. Yeah, life yeah. has changed rapidly. Got another <laughs> started renovating. You know, Renovated a house. We're, reno- <laughs> we're living in a rental again now while our house is being rented. Like all the yeah. life things have happened while we've been on the show for the last so 14 much. seasons. So it's, it's been, been 14 seasons. Yes. Because yes. this- we've only caught up since we moved back from America. So, mm. we're, uh, yeah, you guys were already mm. on it. Yeah. 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 The show's been going for 20 seasons and we've done 14 of them. Were you OG members? No, we you weren't. Came in no, a bit we, later, we yeah? joined, I think it was season six. Yeah. I always get my numbers wrong. But I'm pretty sure we joined season yeah, like six. Right. 2017 or something like that. Yeah, having, right. having never watched the show, mind you, or oh, know yeah. what it was. Oh, wow. Yeah, You didn't know what it no, was? No. I didn't really know what it was. <laughs> well, well, I, in, in when, you, when you read the brief, I remember when we first moved here um, from back from America and it was like we saw that ad. I was like, that is the most stupid premise oh, yeah. for a show. I wish I was a fly on the wall when they did right. that brief in the in the room. Like, oh, I've got a great idea for How a show. Dumb. Picture this. Yeah. Families, a mix of families sitting down and just shitting on TV. Yeah. <laughs> How is that going to be? Not laugh, sitting on the TV, shitting, yeah, shitting on, on the TV. They're going to laugh, they're going to cry, they're going to bag it out. Yeah. Like, can you imagine? They'll be like, what do you mean? You're watching people watch TV. Yeah. It, it took a brave executive somewhere who said, 
that's an amazing idea. Let's yeah. go with it. Yeah. Yeah. And look, yeah. it's been one of the most successful television shows in Australia. So. <laughs> well, it's, it's one of our shows that we don't get a lot of shows that we still get to watch with our 18-year-old, our last mm. kid at home. And she's like, it's Gogglebox, Mum. I'm like, yeah. yep. Let's go. Oh God, we're, don't we're all, even. We're all in front of the TV for gold blocks. I we can't even laugh. picture being in that situation. <laughs> oh, he's I'm coming. in an emotional. He's story. coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> Really emotional this week. I watched the. I, I read the Giving Tree oh, to Malik. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh. Just started we were just talking about that yeah. book the other day. Yeah. I know. Even it's I one know. of the saddest books. Oh it my is. god! Yeah, because I picture it like the tree's a mum. Whereas Malik's just like, oh, that's really mean to the tree. I'm yeah. like, yeah, you know what? I'm probably looking into this a little bit more. But even you saying, oh, just sitting down, and it's like one of the last shows you watch with your 18 year old. I'm like, I'm not ready. I'm we not we ready. get that feedback a lot that it's kind of the one of the only shows that families that can still sit everyone. Yes. and everyone's as interested as one another. It's, yep. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, everyone's represented. I yeah. mean, yes. that's the thing. You've got yep. young people, older people, middle yep. of the range ethnicities. Yes, yep. it's, culture, it's cultural a, differences. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, yeah, that's a big right. thing for us when we came on the show. Show, mm. That was one thing we heard about from a lot of like the Arab community was, oh, it's so nice to see a representation of us, how we really are. Absolutely. Like, uh, you know, because, you know, it's funny to have the stereotype and, you know, like the fully sick, the Habib, you know, it, it's funny even for us. Yeah. It's a stereotype that's actually there. <laughs> it yeah. is actually there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's funny, but like that's not all we're about. You know, Lebanese people are known for being really educated and really like warm and like really loving and kind and we feed the whole street and like mm-hmm. yes. there's so much they don't see. It's like nice to be yeah. that representation. Well, it's nice to be included. Yeah. Isn't it? Because they feel like you matter. Yeah. I didn't grow up with anyone looking like me on TV. That's right. Like no one. Jasmine. Yeah. From Aladdin. I was going to say, that's With that's unrealistic hair. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You've kind of got her hair. Pretty good match. Yeah. But didn't you have Jake Gyllenhaal in the movie <laughs> as well? <laughs> no, that was something else. Was it? it? It was quite eye-opening for us, you know, as born Australians, getting messages early on when we first started from, from family saying that were somewhat, it could have been quite ins- insulting sort of messages, but they meant it in a nice way, but it mm. was kind of changing perceptions of what they thought of an yeah. Aussie Arab household. Oh, wow. Which and I think is important. Like, what did, I, like, it's where the intent is, right? Yeah, right. Like, what, what, did, um, what did you think happened at our house? You yeah. know, what did you think we were like? And, you know, just really changing that perception of yeah. what the Lebanese Australian was. And I think prior to that, again, like Sarah said, like we love ethnic humour. It's it's funny, but it was like doggies and all yeah. the, you know, footy show stuff. Stereotypes and all those sorts of things, which is yeah, we're very much not like that. You know, you do have a great doggy. Though. Yeah, I do have a bulldog. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I don't go for the bulldog, the, but I... that's the irony. <laughs> <laughs> we're not a bulldog's house, but we have a bulldog. That, so thank God for our our beautiful children. But they've restored <laughs> respect to our name after that dog because oh, that mate, dog is an you, absolute you, abomination. I'm so glad. To our family, yeah, I'm, we are, we're just so glad that, that those bits get left in where he yes. get, when he gets excited. <laughs> Oh, Bane, Bane is best described as your mate that comes over and then sleeps on the couch and never leaves and then drinks the milk straight from the carton and then yeah. tries to sleep with one of your relatives. And yeah. Yeah, that's, I, that's I Bane. That. He's an absolute yeah. menace. And you, you try get... and tell them what they've didn't, done wrong. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, that's Bane. I love it. Because when you, when you both get so excited about about something that Lebanese that comes on, like usually it's usually Lebanese food. I was going to yeah. say it's the first. And it's yeah. genuine. And, they're and it's genuine. It's and, genuine. And we're all excited at home and then the dog comes in to hump. It's like, yeah. There's yes. a lot that doesn't make it that you see, like when we get so excited over stuff. Yeah. There's a lot that doesn't like, you know, make it because it's going on for so long. We genuinely right. get so excited to see something Lebanese on TV yeah, and then, yeah, Bane just goes for it. And then sometimes I'm like, all right, no, 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 we gotta, we got to calm it's... it down, mate. you got to calm it down. The dog is not stopping. We get the bucket of water yeah. <laughs> now now so as soon good. as we see a cooking show of any sort we often will grab bane and put him in another room because someone will get hurt yeah <laughs> he's just such a wrecking ball that he will be losing our mind and out of nowhere he's either come and you know headbutted yeah. me or he's started to hump jad and he's just you know he does damage yeah. i've actually still got like uh, from maybe six months ago he jumped up while we're filming clawed me with his claw oh yeah and i've still got a white line down my leg from where he scratched me so he doesn't yeah. muck around. He's a good twenty six kilo worth of yeah. dog. Yeah, so. he's a he's a chunk of muscle. <laughs> yeah. or a chunk yeah. of when the season's on, I have to like freshly clip his nails and yes. give him a bath and be like, okay. 
Yeah, yeah you have to like kind of prep him up so he's just well, like scratches. Well, lucky it's not smell a vision, so you can't smell him. So you oh. can probably just clip his oh, nose. <laughs> <lame. laughs> <Yeah, laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Very lucky. Leaving white line fever on your legs, mate. <laughs> we, we've got a we've got a slight connection with you, Maddie, because our eldest daughter did a fine arts degree uh-huh. at a university here with my sister. and her favourite teacher <laughs> was your sister. Oh, yes. Favourite. Oh, wow, what And a she small would talk world. about about the both of you and when you were pregnant with Malik oh. and she just, my daughter loved, loves your sister. My elder sister, Shireen, she's, um, yeah, she's an artist by yes, trade and, now, right, and yeah. now an academic in the arts, but she paved the way for the rest of us kids. I'm one of four. I'm the youngest of four. And she was the eldest daughter of a Lebanese family who had her when she, my parents were 22 when they had her. Right. And she did all the things the eldest child of a Lebanese family should never do. They, <laughs> they, 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 they wanted her to become a lawyer. She became an artist. Yeah. She uh, got tattooed all over. She shaved yeah. her head. She, you know, did drugs. She moved out of home when she was 18. She did all the... so. You know, all the fun stuff. All, all, all our siblings, comparative to her, have been yeah. angels. But she's wow. um, she's incredible. She's, she's got two beautiful kids. She's also like your second mum, I feel. She yeah, well, she's fourteen years gap. older than me. Oh, so, oh wow. yeah, pretty big um, gap. Both her yeah. and my other sister, who's uh, twelve years older than me, they raised me just as much as my mum. You know, I spent yeah. my uh, holidays in Potts Point and Kings Cross on school, school holidays because that's where my parent, well, that's where my sisters lived. Yeah, yeah, right. So they opened my mind to a lot of things. I feel like I've got such a um, for a young Arab kid growing up in Australia, I've, I feel like I was a lot more progressive to my mates because of the upbringing yeah, I had sure. growing right. up around so, like different types of people with, that my sisters hung out with. So yeah, my sister's awesome. Her art's incredible, and yeah, our house is actually filled with her stuff. Oh, so. Yeah, she was in the so delivery cool. room for both the delivery. Really? Yes. Yeah, she's seen all of me, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So with the first, and and you know, Malik is part of you know one of her exhibits in the arts museum. You know, so we walk the, past, and the photos, Zarian is the oh. photo of him being born was featured at the Museum of New South Wales. Is that the yeah. New South Wales? Yeah, Gallery of it's New South Wales. It's a photograph or is it a painting? Photo- oh. Photograph. Photograph. Sorry, she was later. there for both. If you're not squeamish. I'm not squeamish. Okay, yeah. No. <laughs> I, I was I'm a birth assistant. Oh, oh, there you go. go. Okay. Well, yeah, 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 but I had two caesareans and she was there for both of them. Almost didn't make the second one because I went into labour unexpectedly. Mm-hmm. But she was there for both of them, took photos for both. It was just, she's she's the best person to have around and yeah. I get along with my sister-in-laws, like, amazingly. And so it's just really nice because she's just someone who, like, Laughs in the room. Nothing's yeah, ever serious, nice. and it's just so cool. Well, and a, a great she photographer was, too. Yeah, she was a great, great mentor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So she's Lotus. very she was, she's at a time very, when she really needed one. Yeah. Oh, oh, she loves what she does. So, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, now, so now that we're connected, yeah. 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 Also, we've, yeah. we've also so both got lotus, uh, lotus flowers tattooed on us. So do you? Do you? Yeah, yeah. So my other sister was a graphic designer by trade. She's now a naturopath. She had a career change in her kind of later years. She designed our wedding invite and, you know, obviously lotuses grow through anything. That's and right, so yeah. um, it was the, like our, our invite our emblem, was quite like simple. It was just a, a piece of paper with a lotus on it. And, and so, it was hand drawn by her. So she hand drew it. So post our wedding, we went and both got it tattooed on yeah. our honeymoon. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. In amazing. Amsterdam. We got yeah. a call last minute. Yeah. We in like, Amsterdam. In Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> we, were we, like, we won't elaborate we on won't that elaborate story. On that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The call was last minute and we looked at each other like, are we doing this now? And he's like, yeah, yeah, let's go. How did you guys meet? Were you running in the same circles Is it in the community? Uh, not, what, you know what? what? Happened? Separate circles. So I'm the eldest daughter in a Lebanese, like, <laughs> Lebanese Philo family. So it was, I wasn't like really going to nightclubs and stuff. So it was really like later we had bumped into each other like outside by chance. And Maddie was, it was King's Cross. We were, we were in King's Cross when I first met her. Yeah, but different um, circles. Completely different circles. Yeah. We didn't grow up in the same area. I grew up in the St. George yeah. area. She grew out west in Fairfield area. And, yeah. Right. We just happened to run into each other at a nightclub. We had a brief conversation. We were both smokers at the time in our mid twenties. Haven't touched a cigarette since then. Really you bad. Don't do that. But, no, don't, no, no, <laughs> don't do any of it. No. <laughs> so boring. But um, yeah. So I think we're both outside having a cigarette. We had a brief conversation, and then this was before I think Instagram days. There was no right? Instagram no. then. Yeah. So we had Facebook, and by chance, maybe. Four weeks later, she popped up on my Facebook feed. I had known someone else tagged in a photo and she popped up and I was like, that was that girl that I met. And so I did the right thing and 
I added her on on Facebook. She accepted. I said, "Hi, do you remember into me?" My DMs. And she said, "No, I don't." <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "Great, I'm off to a bad start." Yeah. And it didn't obviously leave much of an impression. Yeah, and he wrote like, "Hi." I was like, "Man of many words." Yeah, yeah that's exactly. <laughs> who what you just wrote. writes? And I'm just like, "Who just writes hi?" You know, in my head, I'm like, "This guy." And then, yeah, it was a long road of uh, courtship before I got the the first date. Yeah. See, yeah. that's my my advice. Whenever someone's like, "I can't find a nice guy," I'm like, "You can't make it easy." <laughs> you can't, the good ones will hang around if they really like you. Sift they them will out show a little bit. Interested. Sure. Exactly. How long were you dating before you popped the question? Two and a bit years, I okay. think. I think we're about two yeah. and a half years. And yeah. what was that like? Did you do something oh, special? It was magical. Oh, <laughs> oh, it was magical. <laughs> oh, we were in Bali and he disguised it as my birthday because every year I had had like a dud birthday and I just got over birthdays. Like every time my birthday came around, I was like, ugh, I don't want to do anything. So when I started with Maddie, his thing was to make my birthday really nice. So he would yeah. always do something really cool for my birthday. Mm. Um, and then... In Bali, like, it was around the time of my birthday. So in my head, he's organised this beautiful dinner for us and we've got this lovely place there and this beautiful resort. And so, like, he had me blindfolded and I went down and they took my blindfold off and there was, like, candles everywhere. There's, like, these, um, what do you call the the pools? The um, Infinity pool. Infinity yeah. pools. Yeah, we're, and, in, we're in Ubud, so, like, yeah. in the jungle at the oh, Hanging hello. Gardens of Ubud and we had the double infinity pool and... Yeah, it was oh, it was so much, and then they had they had the um the dinner over the pool, and so he wanted a photographer to take a photo of the moment, and all he needed was just the moment. That's it, and then that's nice. But then the photographer just <laughs> wouldn't leave and kept trying to like make us do weird things like <laughs> like stand where the flower love hearts were holding our hands really far apart. I'm like, I don't want to do this, dude. I just want to hug my fiancé and be so, in the moment. So from, the thing that caught me off guard with the proposal was that I didn't expect myself to feel nervous. Mm. You know, we'd been together for a while. I knew it was the right decision. Mm. I, there was no nerves leading into it. But for some reason, once I knew that it was a, imminent, when we were in the hotel room getting ready to go out for dinner that night, which was her birthday dinner... She was in the shower. I was so nervous that I had to keep myself busy. So I cleaned the hotel room from top to bottom. Oh, Should have known right. something was up. Really, <laughs> that was the really first unlike red flag. me. Not yeah. my sort of style, especially while on holiday. She mm. gets out of the shower. The place is spotless, and I'm doing push-ups. And she's <laughs> oh, like, yes. "What are you doing?" And I couldn't even say push-ups. I was so nervous that I just said fitness. <laughs> yeah, fitness. fitness. And she I'm was like, like right doing? So then we, I blindfolded and we got this kind of cart that took us down the mountainside into where the, the place was and there was kind of flower petals leading to then a giant flower petal of hearts and they'd arranged the, the dinner in the middle of the infinity pool so they'd put like wood over it and yeah. made it really beautiful. Wow. And then we had the photographer there and so then she undoes the blindfold, sees all this, still thinks it's for her birthday dinner and I've yeah, since s- <laughs> stuck, snuck behind her and dropped down to one knee. Sarah being Sarah just was chatterbox. Just, this is the most beautiful thing. Oh, my God. Hello to the photographer. Like, just, and I'm meanwhile just waiting. I'm just, like, shaking nervously for her to turn around. I'm, like, taking it all in. Like, wow. Oh, my God. Look at this. This is amazing. I'm like, she's never going to turn around. She's still going. And And if she did turn around, she's going to fall over you into the pool. And then so she finally turns around. I propose. By that point, I'm, I, I had what I'd planned to say just didn't come out. I was complete cotton mouth. Did you say fitness? Yeah. fitness? yeah. His arm was I, I, sore. Fitness? And so holding oh. up his the, arm. Oh. the money shot from the photographer is me like this because my arm had gotten so sore from holding it up. That I, I look now at that photo, I'm like, oh my god! And you burnt through yeah. like push-ups. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So your arms my triceps were tired. Were tired. It was. It was. That really disaster. was fitness. Yeah. And he, I could see he wanted to say something, and he just goes, uh, "Marry me." <laughs> yeah. Oh. I think I got out, and I love you. He said Marry he had me. planned like this whole thing to say. Oh, He's yeah. so well written. Awesome. He's so well spoken. Yeah. He always has like things planned for what he wants to say, and he. <laughs> Marry me, and I'm just like, yes, I'm like, yeah. this is great. <laughs> it's the best birthday ever. So, were you guys on TV at that point? Or, uh, yeah, we had just started with Gogglebox. Right. Oh, no, 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 we weren't. It was after, I think, we were engaged around the time we had started. So, oh, yeah. I it think we close. had gotten engaged, yeah. and then like maybe six months yeah. later or five months later, yeah, yeah, we yeah, ended maybe. up getting on the show, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, is in your culture, and forgive me for not understanding no, this. Ask I, I, away. Know, I love it. 
Maddie, did you did you have to get approval? Get oh, this permission? is hilarious. This is I, the best question you could have asked. Look, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, so it, it is. Oh, yeah. It is. Um, Great minds, I, th- I think it is a cultural thing to yes get the get the father's permission. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily Arab culture. I think it's a lot of well, culture in general, right? Yeah. Like yeah. I think it's the yeah. Arabs so are very strange. big on respect, so yeah, it's not sure. necessarily about oh you have to ask the dad so much so as it's showing respect to the family. So, like, that's a big thing you'll always hear, like, from an ethnic um, family, whether it be Arab or Italian or Greek, in my experience. Mm. So it's like they want the families to be respectful. You've got to be respectful. And, like, I would never talk back to Matt's mom and, you know, always mm. very polite and stuff like that. Yeah, respect um, for your elders, essentially. It's just respect which, for yeah. your elders, basically. I mean, him asking my dad, bro. How did so, that go? <laughs> so we'd, we'd gone to her dad's house for dinner and um, Had I... Had you already popped... You clearly already popped the question. No, no I hadn't. Yet. No. Oh, okay. So there was, it was a couple of things. I needed to get her dad away from her so I could ask because she was also with me at the dinner. And so I'd said to him, hey, he just built like every old Lebanese man, a granny flat out the back of his house <laughs> that he did himself. Yeah. So I was like... With stuff he's kept for like 25, 30 years yeah. that we kept telling him to throw. And he's like, see, everyone told me throw, throw, throw. Yeah. Now look, the- look <laughs> I'm losing. I'm like, oh, no. The light bulb that he's kept in the box for the last 15 years finally yeah. in its place. Oh, God. Hold on, let me look. And he's got like a jar. Like yeah. he'll have a jar. I resemble that. I'm yeah. my yeah. shit. Like that too. <laughs> it's yeah. true. So he's chucked stuff away. Yeah. So he's built this whole thing. So I've said, Sam, why don't you take me out and show me what you've done? So we, we went out there and Sarah was in the main house. while, And so I, as soon as we got in there, I said, Sam, before you show me, I need to tell you, I'm going to ask Sarah to marry me. And he was in the middle of kind of showing me his stuff and he just went, yeah, okay, have baby while you're there. And well, because like, I said, anyway. I'm going to ask her to marry me in Bali. He goes, yeah, okay, marry, uh, have a baby while you're there. Anyway, <laughs> the tiles. <laughs> He's like just obsessed I, with talking about these damn tiles. And I was like, Sam, you heard what I said? He's like, yeah, 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 all good, all good. And that what was the it. Hell? And Arab and their tiles. <laughs> I remember he walked into Shireen's house and it's like all this beautifully architecture home, right? Two artists, a sculptor and an artist, and it's concreted floor. And my dad's like, Haram, you know, if they want, they should tile. They I'll, should I'll, tile. They he, should tile. He asked, I have some tiles that yeah, I kept. He did. Yeah, he did. asked my sister if she needed some tiles to finish off her renovation. Because <laughs> oh, it was unreal. polished concrete. That's so <laughs> unreal. Seems like, telling Matt about the tiles. Haram means poor thing. Like they, yeah. they ran out of money. Yeah. They fi- they couldn't yeah, finish like the, the renovation. Yeah. And so, um, like he's happy to help. <laughs> so was your, was your, do you think your dad then... Sarah, is he not a talkative fella? Are they like, you know, sort of like men traditionally mm. in Australia, we don't do a lot of talking to each other about matters of the heart. Oh, no. You know, so it's difficult to connect that way. So do you think yeah. it was easier for him just to go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah they, don't, they don't, especially that generation, they don't talk about like feelings and stuff. They just either get angry or get quiet. It's just like, you right. know, like, yeah, like, I, they don't talk. So I, I think he just didn't know what to say to Matt. Yeah, and I, I also think her dad, like especially now, and my dad's the same. As they get older, they get more emotional, and I think he just yeah. wanted to not get emotional. Right. Yeah, so he course. was like, "Okay, yeah, all good. Change yeah. the subject." Yeah. Right? Right. right. And first one to be married in your family. First were you? one. Yeah. I that went. To, been it's like un- unintentionally stereotypical. Like what an Arab kind of wants is like the firstborn daughter marrying a Lebanese boy and yeah. it's not even like intentionally it's just just by chance you know and then, and goes then I had TV. two boys yeah, yeah. and then I had two boys my dad cried when he found out I was having boys he's got like girls yeah okay. and even the dogs are female he says so he, he I remember him saying to me I hope you have sons <laughs> and I was like why what's wrong with the girls he's like everyone in this house is a female, even the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I feel he just needs some male energy. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, like, he just, like, they hold it in. And, and we sure. realised we both went through life thinking that we we're going to have two girls because of just, you know, so Sarah's one of two girls. My okay. my older brother had two girls. My parents had two girls before they had two boys. All my uncles had two girls. So Yeah, my mum's, like, five girls, one boy. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. So we just thought. So Malik's the prince. Yeah. Mm. He was the, wow. He and must... her, her dad the whole time was like, and my dad as well, you're having a boy, you're having a boy. Yeah. And then they we did. And then we had two be. boys and we're like, what is going on with, <laughs> we, yeah, we weren't expecting that. My dad was well wishes, but you were talking to your dad about contraception, con- uh, con- conception. Um. I was like, what are you talking about? My dad was just hoping we have sons because he needs boys. Your, your dad's like, oh, yeah, no, by that time frame, I reckon it's boys. So my, my. <laughs> my... <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Have, have you ever heard of Dr. Shettle's method? No, I haven't. Okay, okay. so <laughs> this, okay. Is, this is a story. All right. yeah. So my, my parents had two girls. They wanted to have a boy. So at that time, whenever it was, it would have been, I don't know, um, what years were we talking now? Long time. Eight, well, I was 87, but my brother was 80. So 1980, there was a thing in the woman's weekly or whatever yeah. it was it was called and it was dr shettles might method. have been dolly magazine dolly doctor <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe and it was how to con- how to choose the gender that you want through the way you conceive your child and it's meant to be 90 something percent effective so my parents decided to give it a go they had a boy then they did it again for the the second they had a boy which is what they wanted so they got two girls and two boys so then after my parents' experience, my dad would then impart his knowledge onto yes. all his friends who were in the same boat. The most recent one is his barber. This was only five years ago. His barber who had had five, so five, girls? five girls. Yeah. And he was going and his wife had said to him, if you don't get your boy on this one, then that's it. We're done. My dad said, yeah, I'll tell you like, what. Uh, 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 let's let's go for Shettles. <laughs> Dr. Shettles. Google Dr. Shettles' method. And funnily enough, he had a boy on the six. No. Dad got free haircuts for three months. So dad's <laughs> Only constantly. Three months? Yeah, yeah. I know. That's right. a big thing. After six, yeah. He's he, a lifetime. He'd right come there, home mate. days with just. My dad doesn't drink, but he'll come home in days with just bottles of alcohol. It's like, you told someone about like Dr. Nice Shell's method. Like, expensive scotch. Yep, someone will give him. And yeah, he doesn't drink. So it's just collect. It's, they've just got a beautiful cabinetry and it's just display <laughs> alcohol, basically. Is this what you guys did? Did no, you use this method? We no. didn't. Can no, you share no, what Shettles no. is telling us? So I, what do they say? I, haven't, I don't know the side behind it but okay. the, the, there's a part of like sexual position yeah. the time of month that you can yeah. see oh, okay um the big one is the temperature of the women's parts before you have sex and i think after and then the difference between girl and boy i believe is baking soda or what it was apple cider vinegar or, or apple something cider. like that there's two okay. different yeah. chemicals that you need Acid- to bathe acidity. in yeah, yeah. Acid- I acidity heard of that. right i, I think that. like Matt, your dad guess because for me i can't you know people will use the app and stuff i can never say when i'm ovulating that case so we had to use like ovulation tests and stuff yeah and so your chances of a boy i would say using that are more high because it's always really close to your ovulation, whereas with a girl, it has to be like further before. That's that's a you theory, know? though. That's not that's, based in oh, science. Oh, that's part of Dr. Shuttles. Yeah, yeah. Okay. From what I've been told <laughs> by Gilda and George Fart, that's part of Dr. Shuttles. <laughs> so method. they they're like, why why don't you use it for the second to get a girl? More like I, I'm I I'm t- going to take baby. the fun out of it when we're trying to do a science experiment while yeah. having sex. Right? So like, yeah, I'm not into it. Apple I'm just I'm anyway. good with whatever <laughs> I have. Yeah. 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 Would you have done that? Would you have done that? I mean. If you mix baking soda and apple cider yeah. vinegar, the whole thing explodes. Yeah, exactly. You're trying try to clean the toilet. <laughs> yeah, that's what they used to get stains out of carpet. Oh, exactly. That. Yeah. And that stuff's amazing for that. That'd be the biggest think... explosion we've ever had in the bedroom, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What the hell is going on there? <laughs> it's a boy and a girl. So, yeah. so um, there's a really funny scene because my, my brother, I don't know if you know um, Chris, he's on radio over in Dubai. He's I got, heard about this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he's on, a, he's on a TV show, was on a TV show on Netflix over there called Dubai Bling, of which my parents were also on because they were over there staying with him for a few months while they filmed. <laughs> is this a reality show? Yeah, a reality yeah. show. Wow. Right on. And there's this great scene from Dubai Bling where my mum is telling a doctor <laughs> how to conceive for a boy or a girl and it just crosses to the doctor's face. She's like, um... <laughs> And okay, just talking about I, I the other side of Inigo. I, 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 I don't quite medically recommend this, <laughs> but I'll, I'll look into it, Gilda. Thank you. <laughs> you Australians have funny ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, no, it's true. That's what works <laughs> for us, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh mm, my God, I love yeah, it. I know. How, how did they find you two for Gogglebox? Yeah, so we um, it was funny. It was kind of through a friend of a friend who yep. was casting for the show, yep. and it, we just I just got a call from a friend one day saying, "Hey, do you want to do this thing?" And I was like, "What is it?" She's like, "Don't worry, I'll take care of everything. You just you just need to an audition." And uh, the audition's happening next week, and so okay, why not? But we had no 
preconceived idea around what the mm. show should be or what we should say or how we should act. And I yeah. think yeah. that probably helped with, you know, getting on the show in the yeah. end because we just were ourselves. Yeah. yeah. And was entertainment part of what you guys were doing prior to it or were you what we what were you both doing before Gogglebox? Oh, uh, not necessarily like entertainment in that area. Like yeah. I was a freelance makeup artist and then I also had a hair and makeup agency and I did a lot of like social media stuff anyway, like oh, okay. videos and stuff. And so naturally I'm around a lot of that, you yeah. know, with filming and things like that. So it's not necessarily like I was in front of the camera for that stuff. It was usually behind the camera and, you know, a lot of you know, there's companies kind of hire you for different, you know, talent and stuff like that. Mm. So yeah. Sarah had a had a follow. I didn't at all. I was, what were you, you know, doing? I, yeah. I, I, I love social media and I was quite active on social media. Yeah. I love photography. I would post, but I'd, I always worked in the media industry and I worked in corporate in, in both, yeah, media agency and media publisher land. So, and I still do. Yeah. We, yeah, yeah still do our day jobs. I also do a podcast for Mamma Mia, this glorious mess. Hard launched it yesterday. Oh, congratulations. So, yes, yeah, so I've got a segment there where, like, yep. if someone has a question or, like, a situation, basically they're, you know, doing a voice message, give me the situation and I can give them my thoughts, share my thoughts and see if I can help them out. Brilliant. Whether it helps or not, I don't know, but I try. Oh, good for you. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. On so you. it's really, really fun. It's been really fun. So that's all new. Right. And, Maddie, you're, you're still doing your... Still in my corporate role. Yeah. yeah so I've had a... 15-year career and, yeah, something I still enjoy. And What is that like then going into corporate land? Because mm. it's a hugely popular show, Gogglebox, and yeah. so there have got to be people in there that walk past you in the in the office and go, uh, double take, it, it aren't is, you on that it, TV show? It's really funny and, you know, it's I, I don't assume anyone watches it, but then, mm. you know, I'll interview someone for a job and then you hear through other channels that the person got off the interview and it was like, oh, was the guy from Gogglebox just interviewed me? <laughs> And I, I think most people assume we are on TV full time, yes, and maybe it, that's, that's right, right mm. for some people. But yeah. I'm reluctant to give up my my long career, and I, yeah. I love what I do, so I um I, I stuck to it. And so people were like, wait a minute, what's the what's the guy from Gogglebox doing so in funny, here? Because you got a work event, and they think you're the talent that's been booked for the event. Yeah, <laughs> right. so that's, that's the other yeah, thing. Yeah, I, they, oh. they go, you don't know. You're not eating with those people. You're yeah. coming into the special room. Yeah, yeah. You I often get <laughs> you know used for all yeah. the the keynotes and yeah. all the public speaking, and it's like. Yeah, it's it's funny. Like, oh, you got you're the key speaker today. It's like no, I actually just work for the company, and I'm not getting paid to be here. This is part of my day job. <laughs> Does it has it changed the way you watch TV? Being on the show, like, can you just watch it normally and not feel like you have to be watching it intensely to comment? I have to like try not to talk. Because yeah, I okay. got into this like, oh, you know, they love your opinion, so you talk and you get doing that for so many years. Yeah. You're like so opinionated. So I'm talking yes. still like I'm on the show when we're watching stuff and Matt's just like, oh. I'm trying to listen. <laughs> Stop talking. Yes. I, I've got to rewind it now. I can't like. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, don't, I don't mind when someone's talking over maths because it's like there's no plot line and I can just <laughs> yeah. jump in at any moment. Yeah, sure. But often for our personal watching, we'd be watching like a drama of some sort or Game of Thrones last night yes. at a launch and, and Sarah's in the background. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my, oh my God. Can we just watch this thing without, I'm trying to listen. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Has being on the show strengthened your relationship, do you feel? I think our relationship was uh, strong prior and I don't changed. think it's changed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't see any any change. If anything, it's just like... Just, just part of your life. Yeah, they're literally just part of the furniture for us now, yeah. doing doing that, and it's like... I think our life circumstance changes your relationship yeah. more than anything. I think when we think about the last few years, it's been a whirlwind. We have hardly any time mm. of when it's just her and I, and yeah. we used to be... You know, me staring at Sarah and Sarah staring at me, and now we've got a five-way kind of pentagon happening at home yeah. with the dog and the two kids, and mm. m working multiple jobs and doing yeah. so many things. I come home yeah. from work and we film a show, and our life is at a different pace. And I think that um, makes it harder for us to make sure we find time for one another. Yeah. Um, so, what, sure. what do you do? We do what works right now. It's like survival mode because <laughs> you've got like two young kids. I'm looking after the kids and trying to work a bit while I'm doing that, like juggling that. Yeah. And then Maddie's work is so full on that sometimes he doesn't finish until the kids are going to bed or he might be away or something like that. So, like, we're really just rather than thinking too much into things sometimes, we just go 
this is what we need to do to survive right now. Mm. And then when we find each other, like, sitting down and it's just us, like, oh, my gosh, just ask for a bit of it. We yeah. just give yeah. each other a hug and we're like, oh. oh, this is nice. And then, like, the baby will cry. We're like, that was lovely. I'll see you yeah. later. <laughs> like, you know, it's really yeah. just survival. You take yeah. your moments, though, don't yeah, you? We don't, yeah, we don't think too much into it. So for us it's like if we're not spending quality time with each other too much, for me a big thing is family time. I like even if it's just coffee in the morning on a Sunday, like shall we walk to the cafe? Like that's enough for me. Like I'm like I just need that just that family time once in a while when we can fit it in. Like yeah. that's all it is. Because I know, look, that's temporary. Yeah, you know, that's right. eventually we, kids um, get a bit older and you can. And then and then you'll be going. Oh, remember when we used to? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. we're in that phase now. <laughs> yeah. Look at all photos mm-hmm. going. Oh, they were so little. Yeah. <sighs> I get yeah. Pe- that look. Hey, you know what? Mm. I've been going through our bucket of photographs, mm. and literally, there's two buckets of just full of pictures, and of course. The first one, there's a million photographs of. The second mm-hmm. one, there's maybe 200,000. <laughs> the third one, there's about 1,000 pictures, yeah. you know, which I hear that a lot. Yeah. You also um, don't have as much time. You're juggling, you well, know. Part of what happened with us was when Lotus was born, I was 28 years ago, we were using film cameras. So all the film got developed. So there's mm-hmm. hard copies of that. Yeah. For Bodes, who came in 2006, mm. there's it's all digital. digital. And so if that phone is gone... Then often we don't know where those pictures are. Yeah, yeah. it's you hard. Know? Yeah, but in looking back at those pictures, it goes so fast, mm-hmm. and there are moments where you want to you mm-hmm. go, God, I, you know, when you're in the trenches, like mm-hmm. you're talking about, and you're changing diaper at three a.m. or whatever, mm-hmm. or doing stuff like that, and you go, Oh my God, how's yeah. this going to get? You know, mm-hmm. it goes so quick, and then you sort of blink of an eye, and it literally feels like a blink of an eye. Yeah, it does. I, I, that it's I, gone. So I was just, it's just it, it's really so enjoy fast. it while you're like, there. I remember people trying to tell me about sleep training the kids. In the beginning, first time parent, I'm trying to do the right thing and like trying to listen and try and do this. And they go, you should time this, you should time that. And I was like, Mm. I don't bloody want to do any of this. Why am I doing this? It's not in my instinct to want to be separated from my child. And they go, but what about you and your husband? You're going to sleep in the same bed. I'm like, I don't care when my husband's sleeping. Yeah, she doesn't. Are you kidding? I really don't. I don't care right now. Are you joking? I'm going to care about a fully grown adult. I have barely slept, whereas I can get extra sleep if the baby's next to me, like my toddler's sleeping next to me. Yeah. It's fine. I'll see him in the morning. I'm just going to like, I stopped listening to people and like up to now. Yeah, right. You know, I've got my kids in the bed with me and poor Maddie's in the other room. Sometimes he doesn't even have the heater. Yeah, I take the heater. Good about. night, baby. I'm going off to the tundra. I'm like, I'm sorry. The, the rental like, we're in so right sorry. now is just freezing. I'm but just I- like, this works. You know, and you know what's amazing is like when people ask me like, oh, but like, what does my husband think of it? I'm like, he's happy because he sleeps as well yeah. and yeah. he that's can work. exactly right. I don't yeah. have a husband that's against that. It's working for both of us right yeah. now. Yeah. So like, we're just like on par. I think we're, we're equally on par with what we, we want from I, our I, life I guess that's right the now. main thing, too, in a relationship. Yeah. If you're on the same page... Yes, mm, we are. It's... It works. Absolutely. And whatever the page is, whatever you guys want to write exactly. on that page. Yep. You it's have to be to comfortable you. with your page, right? Yeah. Everyone's page is different. As long yeah. as you're on par, you're on the same page with yep. each other, you both understand it, you both trust each other is such a big thing. Mm. Like, I don't think, oh, I'm not sleeping in the same bed as my husband is going to go elsewhere. Where's he going to go? <laughs> <laughs> he's so tired. Good places he's he's going to go. Right? go I'll go, go right? places. He's going, <laughs> to, he's going to Kmart to get an electric blanket. <laughs> I was going to say somewhere with a heater is the only place he'll go. I, well, he barely has time. He can barely shower by himself without the kids around. Where's he going? All right, we're well, the dog too tired. his leg. Like, exactly. come on we're I, too tired to go anywhere. I think the to, if I think about what's helped throughout this period has been a that uh, neither of us hold a grudge. I mm. think we you know have times where mm. we get angry at one another or whatever, but within an hour we've both calmed down and we're completely over it. We never really go to bed angry with each other or hold this long-term grudge, which I think helps. And then yeah. the other thing, particularly in our life, we've felt that's really helped us is having a partnership where we're both really comfortable with your primary res- responsible over here and I'm primary responsible yeah, over yeah. here and then we're secondary responsible to both those things for each other mm-hmm. and being really clear and not trying to put too much guilt on one another about the other part mm-hmm. so yeah. because otherwise it becomes a you know you're doing this and you're doing that and I'm not doing this and I'm not doing that and we could spend 
all that time fighting about all the things. So we don't, yeah. we've got, you know, the roles that we set for each other that we both know. I'm leading this and you're leading that. Yeah. You yeah. Know, for, yeah. And they're not necessarily always the traditional things that you mm. think of between husband and wife and the primary mother and the, and the secondary. Yeah. But, and you it's know, not because I'm the, a woman, he's a man. It's literally just how this works in yeah. our family. Yeah, like right? Sarah, we, we know someone who's it switched around. Yeah. Sarah, Sarah does all the DIY. You would not see me uh, putting right? anything together. Hammer. Sarah has chip rocked walls yeah. and putty. I love when a builder asks him something. I'm like, I'll take over. It's fine. <laughs> we, we, we had one of our neighbours come knock on the door and, and Sarah answered and they were like, is your husband home? We need help with, like, the plumbing. And I was like, and she was like, he's, oh, like, he's like, home, but I'm not sure he's the one you want to speak to. <laughs> I would be like, <laughs> baby, Maddie, I'm yeah. going next door. <laughs> I wanted to say he's home, but it, you're yeah. just asking for the wrong person. Right. right. Don't like, be talking to him about yeah. plumbing. Yeah. Whereas I, I planned our wedding. Uh, I helped. Oh. I designed her wedding dress. You know. Oh, Did you really? Yeah. Yeah. So cool. So yeah. when I say designer, we had a designer, designer. I had a say in how it was designed and helped yeah. get her yeah. to where she wanted to Did you design the, the wedding ring or did you go out and buy that no, together? No, I did all of no, that. No, I did the wedding ring, yeah. yeah nice. So, like, you know, and then in some instances, Sarah is the primary carer and, and I'm the secondary carer for mm. sure. I'm sometimes away for work for three days, four days at a time and, you know, Sarah's has the primary emotional responsibility mm-hmm. of taking care sure. of our children. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's great because sometimes you need to know when to follow. Mm-hmm. You know, you know when to pick it up and go yeah. when when you're the leader. I, I, we were in the at home the other day, and Ali and Bodes were having a conversation. I was like, "This is I do not need to be in that conversation. <laughs> I can sit back and kind of listen, but not Budinsky. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. but it's yeah. taken me it's taken me you know two other kids to figure that out. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. People think you know that, and oh, you have this conversation, and you know that straight away, right? But that's Mm-mm. not the case. That takes Mm-mm. arguments sometimes. Mm-hmm. We've had blowouts. Like, we've had, like, arguments where we both in some level thought that one wasn't appreciating the other, but it wasn't the case. And then that argument allowed us to communicate. And then we were able to, like, oh, okay. And we got into a really good place after that argument. So, like, everyone thinks it's like, oh, you have this chat and you communicate and that's how it works. It's like, no, no, sometimes you argue because you might be overtired and, like, yeah. stretched out thin and then that leads to a nice conversation and you're in a good place. Yeah, absolutely. What values or lessons from your Lebanese upbringing do you really prioritise in your life? For me, um, you know, my dad was the the primary breadwinner growing up. Um, my mum worked as well, but my dad was the primary breadwinner. So, you know, my mum played a more vital role in terms of you know, our upbringing and how we were at home. And I think what I've learnt from my mum, um, I've probably learnt my dad's um, work ethic. Mm. Um, and from my mum, I've learnt to instill confidence in your kids. I think if oh, yeah. if there's any one thing I want Malik to learn from me is that, that he's good and he's got he's full of confidence and that mm. he goes into the world knowing his worth. Getting emotional thinking about that. Aww. It's really important. Yeah. Um, for boys. It I is. mean, aim for girls and, and for boys to be kind. Yeah. 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 I think, um, yeah, when I think of, you know, the, the world in which kids are growing up in now, yeah. especially young boys, it's so, I heard about that story about this kid recently with the, I think you might've seen it, but, um, you know, just the suicide rate in general yeah. for young kids, it's yeah. just, I think the most important thing. And mm. I think when I think of my upbringing with my mom, she, she gave me a lot of confidence. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well done, Mama. Yeah. yeah, she did an amazing. She does an amazing job with that. Mm. Even with my kids, she's amazing when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah. See, my mum's Asian. And my mum's Filipino. Oh, it, and then my dad's Lebanese. So, like, dad's a woman. Well, growing up, I didn't know it was an Asian thing because you know you have Filo friends, and it's like you know you don't really hear like I love you, you sweetheart. You know, it's very like a stereotypical. <laughs> Like you laugh on it later, kind of, kind of stuff. But they're tough. It's yeah. tough love. It's tough yeah. love. Right. It's tough love with Asians, but they they get stuff done. So yeah. what I got from my mum, which I think is really good, was it was never like complaining about stuff she had to do. She just did it. So for me, even as an adult, I don't get when people have to complain about things, and I'm like they're having a full conversation before something gets done. I'm like. Just do it. Like, just do it, man. Like, stop. Ask Maddie. I get so impatient with it. I'm like, just pick it up and go. Like, I got that from my mum. So with okay. work, it was really good because yeah. I'm like, I get it done. If the kids are crying at night time and they need an abby change, in my head, I'm like, get it done. Like, it's just get it done. My mum was like that as a parent with us. I never remember her uh, complaining about all the stuff, the hardships she had to do. And only as an adult did, and I had kids that I realised 
she had no family here mm. and it was literally her with kids who were like 12 months apart right. and she did so much stuff with just that mentality that like, you know, mm. that go get it thing. And my dad, obviously, is my dad was like a panel beater growing up and stuff and so like I became really handy and thrifty. I got that work ethic from my dad and like that's what I got and I feel like culturally around me I feel like a lot of the girls who are close with their dad tend to do the same thing. Yeah. And a lot of like the Asians who grew up with like, you know, their fellow moms, it's the same thing. We're all like just good work ethic, just get it done. Let's do this. Let's do that. It's not really yeah. like a excuses for not to do it. It's more an excuse to do it sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. Mm. Wow, you it's guys, a good mix. You guys are amazing. Mm. <laughs> we're wow, you found salad. each other and yeah, we're in King's Bloody Cross and mm. we I find each other on that <laughs> fateful mm-hmm. day. I feel like I was meant to have two boys. Mm. Well, you, clearly you did. Yeah. 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 I have friends who are like, I can't see you with girls. I'm like, I feel like I was meant to be a boy mum. Yeah. Because like I was talking to my friend's daughter and he goes, you talk to her like she's an adult. <laughs> Like, come on, like, all right, yeah, all right, let's do it. Come on, let's go. I'm like, I can't, I can't picture me going, oh, princess, we're hot. Like, it's really <laughs> nice, but it's just like the way I am, the way I was brought up. I'm like, I think it suits boys. So has Malik unclogged his first toilet yet? Uh, uh, is he into the, he's on, pe- the he's on the pe- tools? He's peeing on the floor a lot at the moment, which okay. is the problem. So I you walk into too. the bathroom <laughs> and it stinks. Or he leaves a, a tissue on the floor because he, Matt's like, when you go to the toilet, if it gets on the floor, you've got to clean it. So he puts a tissue there because he's tired and he's like, it's absorbed it. I'll come back for it oh, later. So he's smart. Yeah, yeah he's very yeah, clever. He's, it out. he's a clever I, cookie, you know. Yeah, yeah. His oh. scooter broke. I taught him how to fix his scooter. Oh, okay. So and? I've got plies in my handbag. Yeah. I should do <laughs> that whole, you know, you. what's in your bag and people take yes. out Chanel. Think, is it, is it a, now, are we talking <laughs> like a Gerber tool or uh, are we... Like uh, it's a proper, you know, it's like pointed. It's probably like this long. Right. Pointed so I can get in. Needle nose. And you got the needle nose yeah, pliers in needle there. Needle nose pliers. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what's one of those, you know, like a Swiss Army knife <laughs> sort of thing with it's, all. No, no, no. It's a needle side. nose plier alone. Yeah. I need the, to get a Swiss Army. You won't be able to take handle. them on the airplane. You won't <laughs> no, get you those can't, on the no. airplane. Yeah, you're but in my head, I'm like, you've got kids, you're always at the park. <laughs> what if something breaks? <laughs> you need a plier. <laughs> Well, we were talking about the bathroom with Malik peeing on a tissue. Mm. Uh, let's stay in there and, <laughs> and hop in the shower. Quick answers, two-minute shower. Here we go. Same question for both What of about your relationship makes you feel the most grateful? Uh, that he takes over all the stuff he does. He has an Excel <laughs> spreadsheet for our life. Mm. Like, I don't have to worry about what bills are due. I don't have to worry about organizing anything. I don't have to worry about being on top of anything. I can just focus on what I need to do because he literally takes whatever he takes over, he does it perfect, like beautifully, <laughs> like beautifully. That is a, a full appreciation. Like, <laughs> oh, I love it. One yeah. less thing for me to think about. She's got an organized husband, which apparently isn't too common. <laughs> At all. Yeah. Every time someone's like, oh, I needed to put my friend's clothes yeah. out, my husband's <laughs> clothes out. I was like, I don't need to do any of that stuff. <laughs> How about um, for you, Maddie? You know, when I when I met Sarah, you, her warmth and, you know, the love she gave me was very evident. And I think seeing her do that with our children is mm. probably the, the best. She's, she's relentless in her care for our kids. And, yeah, she's often completely, uh, I'll be gone for three, four days. There's no complaints. She's up in the middle of the night changing diarrhea nappies and all the stuff. And, um, yeah, she does that day in, day out. Yeah. If you could relive one day with each other, what would that be? Oh, what a good question. Relive one day with each other? One day. Um, It would probably, for me, be a day uh, on our honeymoon somewhere in Europe. Um, Oh, good answer. I'm in the Amalfi Coast with you right now as we speak. Yeah. Sitting by a beach or eating some French bread somewhere. I know the day. Which day? Uh, the watermelon place. Yes. Okay. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Where I sacrificed you in the water because yeah. the wave knocked me off the so. rock. But uh, but that place where they have this watermelon time and like one, they bring this watermelon out and you're like laying there one and we fire were just beach. loving life with each other. <laughs> one oh. fire beach. One fire beach in um in Praiano on the Amalfi yeah. Coast. Having a cocktail with watermelon being served on the ocean, just yeah. jumping off oh my the little cliffside yeah, world and just and laying next to each other there just we, we were both just like can you can you believe we're here yeah mm. like this is just and to be together doing that oh, i could relive that day sounds yeah. magic I caught, yeah uh well aside from watermelon beach uh what the world needs more of is oh compassion love. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Love and compassion. Last question. Can you choose one word to describe each other? Harry. No, I'm joking. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I mean, uh, I mean, the clip ring is a situation, but like that's not. That wasn't my word. <laughs> I'm sure I've got a nice one to think. Of. Here we go. Motivated. Mm. His motivation is next to none. Like it motivates me seeing him. Yeah. I thought I was a motivated and driven person. I'm not compared to him. Wow. Like I'll see him do things, and he's so like. Uh, focused he yep. can be quite focused where i'm just like oh, a butterfly like i can be trying to do something and then like just stop and he's like he even tells me he's like you have done like five six things but you need to just focus on one i'm like you're right can't even argue that like he's <laughs> just so focused and driven nice. we always say if there was two of me in the relationship would be divorce if there was two of sarah would be homeless so yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> We'd be selling coconuts on the beach. You can't, we, we balance each other out because I'm 100 miles an hour mm. and, and she's really relaxed and I think that helps in yeah, our household. Totally. Um, my one word for Sarah would probably be, uh, and I've probably mentioned it in, my, in our wedding speech, would be light. I think like oh, the light yeah. of my life, I always think of Sarah. Just, oh, that's nice. Well mm, done. I, like I don't think one. we've ever had either no, of those words. No, we haven't motivated We've done a number of these. <laughs> not had any of those style. words. Oh, that's good. That's Everyone's nice. unique. Maddie and, and Sarah, thanks so much for being with us today. We can't wait to see you back on Gogglebox in the future, and we'll look forward to seeing you back. in the next season. Yeah. Mate. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Thanks so much. Thanks. Oh, nice chat. Pleasure. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. It's been such a lovely chat. It really has. Oh, and thanks. it's nice hearing some things that Maddie thinks about me it's nice. <laughs> always nice <laughs> nice to reiterate we, these things we love, love, love in the bathroom <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you thank you guys <laughs> see you on the telly we'll be watching you watching us watching you <laughs> and off they go oh my gosh so great <laughs> that's such a fun chat it's such a fun couple Talk about balancing each other out. Oh, I mean, they yeah. already know that about themselves anyway, though they really balance each other out and they really appreciate each other's strengths as well. And I think mm. that's super key in relationship to know you've got this. Thank you for taking that. I've got this. I've, I'm in control of that. And then we're good. We'll uh, it's move a, forward. It's a really good recipe mm. for a, a strong, respectful, fun. Yes time together. Yeah, that's why I love it when you take the, the rubbish out. You are so good at that. Thanks, honey. Yeah. And I love it when you buy the bags. Yeah. <laughs> it's my, it's you do skill. the shop, I'll do the rubbish. I got a certain I'll set do of the skills. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thanks so much for listening, everyone. We hope you enjoyed that. And of course, you can catch up with, with Maddie anyway mm. at, uh, on Gogglebox when it's on your telly. Maddie and Jad. Yeah. And... Bane the dog. Bane the dog. He's, he's become a star in his own right. <laughs> he's a hell of a humper, that dog. <laughs> he <is. laughs> he's got some big long dew claws as well. There's <laughs> one scraping the legs. With. Oh, so hey, good. we'll catch up with you next time on Separate Bathrooms. See ya.